Okay, today we're really going to start taking the tractor apart here, and we're going to start with the couple of things that still connect the front and the back of the tractor. One is the hydraulic lines. I need to remove those. Then the steering, and then down underneath the tractor, there's a member that connects from uh, the transmission all the way up to the axle, and I'm going to have to disconnect that as well. So I'm going to use a 5 16 hex socket to get at these screws that go from those hydraulic hard lines up into the hydraulic pump. I pulled out the three bolts from the hard line at the hydraulic pump. And then on the other end, this is just three standard bolts. That's what it looks like on the upper end with the hard line removed. I could then pull the hydraulic hard lines off. I tip the one end down just uh, right into the drip bucket to uh, keep things from getting messy. And I could completely remove this. So after doing some fooling around with the steering on the other side first, I decided that up here is probably not going to be as easy to disconnect the steering as it would actually back here. So what I'm going to do is, again, on the back of this right here, there's also a castellated nut, but it should be easier to pop this open and then just keep that whole arm with the axle and the steering. I had to pull the pin and then loosen the castellated nut. Unlike the other side, this side had some corrosion to it, so I really had to work at it with the pickle fork. It seemed like one of the issues here was there was uh, kind of a rubber gasket that it looked like it cracked and the grease did not stay in there, so there kind of got some rust. Uh, but after working it a bit with the pickle fork, I was finally able to work it loose and completely remove this. So now without the steering and that hydraulic hard line in the way, uh, you might be able to kind of see a little bit more how the front and the back of the tractor, um, they're really all just connected at the end of the engine right here. Everything just comes together right here. Um, essentially at this plate, this line. Um, but one of the big things that is still there is from the front axle, we've got this tube that comes back. It actually connects uh, at beyond the engine. It actually goes to the uh, kind of the clutch housing. So the very end of the transmission. So I need to unbolt that. And then um, only thing holding this all together is just the engine. Next, I got a jack stand and jack just to make sure that the tractor would be solidly supported while I was working on removing the front end. If we look straight up at it, here's this bracket. Those are um, three three quarter inch bolts. Uh, they do have holes through them and then they're just wired so that they can't work their way loose. So you gotta pull the wire off and then pull these out. I found it was easier just to cut the wires than to try to pull them by hand. After that, I worked the bolts loose with my breaker bar and then used the impact to unscrew them the rest of the way. Now, one other thing I'm going to do before uh, taking this further apart is I do want to take a couple of measurements here. And the big reason why is because the engine is a structural member between the front axle and the transmission and I'm gonna have to replace that with some other structure I want to know how big that is so if I measure from back at the transmission out to where I'm gonna split it here um, I get 21 and a half or excuse me 20 and a half inches here and 22 and a half inches here now to remove the front axle assembly from the engine, it was just time to pull all the heavy duty bolts that connected the two. Okay, so now I'm going to lower the jack and I think the whole front end should be able to just roll away. This did still take a bit of manhandling, uh, but at least the front axle was somewhat well balanced. I did, however, forget that with the steering disconnected, there was nothing to hold the wheels parallel to each other. And there's nothing to hold the wheels straight! 
Oh, that's interesting. Sure, just roll it away. It'll just roll away. Oh, kind of. Kind of rolls away. So behold, here's the engine. And what's holding it up? Absolutely nothing. It is just literally floating there, hanging in the air. But it's bolted to the transmission, which is supported. So now I need to get an engine hoist to get a lift on it and pull out all the bolts connecting it to the transmission. So I got out the hoist, brought it over to engine, lifted it up, got some chain handy to bolt to the engine. Now I did find one good bolt down point, but the alternator was in the way on the other side, so I removed that. And then I was able to attach the chain and take out the slack just to give it a little bit of support. So now I could take out the bolts. I got my breaker bar with the big 15 16 socket, started pulling these bolts. Uh, what else worked well was uh, my great big 15 16 wrench that had the ratcheting end on it. Over on the other side of the tractor, same thing again. Uh, pretty hard to get the bolts started. Use the breaker bar, and then it's just a matter of pulling them out. Nothing too crazy, uh, just a little tedious. What was a little weird was there was this strange male threaded stud sticking out. I really had no idea what that was. I needed to figure that out before going further. Over on the left side of the transmission, we have the starter, and I'm gonna take that out, because of course that pokes into the back uh, by the flywheel here. And maybe with that out, I can also get a look in here. There goes the starter. So now that the starter isn't in the way, we can look in there. I can see the flywheel with the, the teeth on there. Um, I'm not going to be able to get the right angle with the flashlight and the camera. Uh, but across the top, I can see some bolts going through. And there's actually one is right, right up here. But that looks like a threaded bolt with the, uh, the bolt head snapped off. And there's another one on the other side but it's behind all the power steering stuff. So the repair manual said that this was a pair of bolts that went from here all the way into the engine, but what I saw was just thread, so I assumed that the head of the bolt was snapped off. Later I found out that that was not true. These were actually threaded rods here. Unfortunately, I ended up having to remove the steering to be able to actually see this, which added a little bit more work. Now, the other thing I could do was look through the hole left by the alternator, and I could see the area where that strange male stud uh, would have been if it went all the way through, but I didn't see anything like that there, so clearly that wasn't any kind of a, a through bolt. Uh, rather, it must have been some sort of just like a simple alignment pin. So I did end up removing the steering. I'm not going to bore you with the details here, but basically it was removing the two hydraulic lines for the power steering and then removing a whole bunch of bolts that mounted the steering unit down onto the top of the transmission. I lifted it up with my engine hoist because this thing is heavy and set it off to the side. Now that I've got the steering out of the way, I can actually get a look at the back of the bell housing here. Uh, something that's actually a little surprising to me. This bracket, I didn't even have to unbolt that. That actually isn't holes, it's uh, just hooks. So over here, um, I, I could see that, but I couldn't tell if it was designed that way or if it was just broken. Of course, now that I've got this off, I can see it is actually designed that way. Uh, the other thing too now is looking at this, um, that is, of course, not a bolt. That is some threaded rod with a nut. So I think that means over here, um, the good thing is, hey, it's not broken. Uh, the bad news is, hey, it didn't have a nut on it. I actually did find a big nut just laying down here. I'm like, yeah, what's that from? And I set it off to the side somewhere. Um, and I bet that's that right there. But still, I got to figure out um, how to get this out. So I think I need to lift the engine, and then just real gently slide it with, um, with that nut removed. Maybe 
maybe just tap on the end of this a little bit and try to get the engine away. I set to work splitting the engine. Uh, there was a little bit of corrosion on those top two threaded rods, which made it a little bit more difficult. I don't even know why those were threaded rods instead of bolts. Uh, maybe the last person to replace the clutch in the tractor, uh, put it back together with uh, threaded rods and nuts, thinking it would be uh, easier for a future replacement, but uh, kind of confused the heck out of me because it, it's not what I was expecting. It's not what the manual said. Uh, it, I started moving this, I tried prying it apart, and everything was still bound up. And it turned out one of the reasons for this was these weird little uh, male threaded studs, and it took me a little bit of work to figure out what they were. Uh, turns out they were just alignment pins. And I was able to see that by looking through the hole where the starter motor mounted, and I could see that uh, it was a blind hole. It was not a through hole. In fact, if I turned off the light, I could actually see uh, light coming through where the through holes were that mounted the engine onto the transmission. So what I ended up doing was just using a vice grips to rotate this threaded stud out. It was threaded into the plate and then it was just a smooth alignment pin uh, going into the transmission. So here's that other threaded stud. It's uh, low down on the right hand side. And since I grabbed that and moved that, this is starting to open up. And it does look like it's entirely smooth. And it also does not look like any of the threads go through the little plate here, but probably just the just tight, tight fit. So I am wiggling with the vice grips here and just kind of pulling, sliding. Um, I could even get a flat bar in there to give it a little more pressure but it looks like it's coming. Well, I got the engine far enough away that we can actually see the flywheel now. I'm trying to pull it out as straight as I can. Uh, a little bit tricky. Um, these two bolts on the top seem kind of goofy. Those seem like they kind of bind up a bit. Um, I'm also trying not to accidentally rotate the engine, but there weren't too many great lifting points at the top. I think it should be lifting pretty straight though. Whew, there we go. Well, this certainly was no small amount of work to get the engine off here, but what it does do is it now frees us up to examine the clutch and the flywheel and figure out what needs to be done to build an adapter to mount this onto an electric motor. And heck, we still have to pick out uh, what the electric motor is actually going to be for this project. So I hope you like these videos. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you hit that little notification bell icon so you always hear first about the next video that comes out. And until next time, stay charged up.